Hey, my name is Mahesh Mapaka, and today I'm going to be doing my presentation on pathogenesis of Yersinia pestis, also known at, as the plague agent. So a little bit of background on the pathogen. The Yersinia pestis is a gram-negative, facultative, intracellular bacterium usually found in fleas on small, on small mammals, such as squirrels, rats, groundhogs, prairie dogs, etc. This pathogen is responsible for causing bubonic plague, which is considered the deadliest recorded pandemic in human history, killing around 75 to 200 million people in the early 1300s and causing the Justinian plague around 500 BC. Moving on to the pathogenesis um, occurring, this starts out with the Pollux irritans or Xenocella chopis uh, flea biting a human. Yersinia pestis is sometimes regurgitated when fleas feed, causing a transfer of the pathogen through blood. Macrophages in the blood are able to converge on the bacterium. However, they are not able to kill Yersinia pestis due to the secretion of, a, of effector proteins into the cell cytoplasm. This effectively allows Yersinia pestis to synthesize virulence factors and survive within the uh, macrophage through its plasmids. The bacterium is that bacterium then kills the host macrophage, releasing itself into the environment and quickly spreading to the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes in the gram or in the groin, uh, armpits, etc., enlarge and become black, which is characteristic of what we call buboes. If left untreated, the plague can exhibit septicemic symptoms where symptoms of systemic shock are evident. And these symptoms include nausea, vomiting, dizziness, low blood pressure, internal bleeding, gangrene or necrosis of extremities, and even meningitis in some extreme cases. The dispersed hemorrhaging, or also known as DIC, also causes purplish bruising around the skin as well. The final and most deadly stage of the disease is the pneumonic form. The symptoms manifest as dyspnea, which or troubled breathing, hemotysis, also known as coughing blood or sputum, and plague pneumonia. At this point in the plague, if left untreated, 99% of these cases result in the death of the patient due to the fact that it's difficult to control the infection and also after once the infection leads to um, the lungs, it will uh, start systemic organ failure as well. Luckily for us, today we have many or we have many treatments and pre preventative measures uh, than we did back in the 1300s. Today we've advanced so far in medicine where we're able to readily have antibiotics available. Antibiotics such as gentamicin, chlorophenicol and streptomycin are powerful antibiotics used to treat Yersinia pestis infections uh, if caught early. If pulmonary symptoms of the plague persist, use of a ventilator might be considered. After treatment of the plague, doctors may recommend doxycycline as the post-treatment prophylaxis, uh, and that's for a good measure. Prevention methods include ensuring pets are flea-free, applying bug spray in the wilderness, and even wearing gloves when handling possible infected animals. And that's all I have. And I also have this, um, the concept map in the link for the YouTube video. So if you wanna check it out and take a closer look at um, what I wrote, if it's like a little bit too small in the video here, please check it out. Link is in the description. Um, and Thank you so much for listening to my YouTube video.